primary candidates in the Leavenworth City, Lansing City, and Leavenworth School Board primary elections, which will be upcoming on the uh, local ballot. This forum is being sponsored by the uh, Leavenworth Area Chamber of Commerce, Leavenworth Lansing Area Chamber of Commerce, to be correct. Uh, and uh, I want to thank them in behalf of all the candidates that will be here today. Uh, so none of the candidates need to express any thanks whatsoever because I'm going to give each candidate a limited period of time in which to make their case uh, to be elected to uh, these respective uh, governing positions. Uh, we do appreciate the effort that was uh, put out by the Chamber and by Mr. Charlie Greger, uh, Chamber Executive, to put this uh, forum together. We're going to have uh, 13 candidates in our first segment. All of these uh, people are candidates for the Leavenworth City Commission. Ground rules essentially are, uh, after I introduce the candidate, uh, that candidate will have four minutes in which to make his or her case. Uh, after that, uh, I have a right for one minute to ask follow-up questions based upon what either the candidate says or what they might have said uh, in public or some other issue that may be uh, pertinent to the election. So with that, I want to get underway and introduce our first candidate, who is Laura Janice Gasperi. Is that correct, Laura? Yes, it is. Uh, Laura is a, uh, a resident of the city of Leavenworth, of course. She's married, has two children, and uh, this is her first time in the political arena. Uh, she has worked for the American Red Cross as the Health and Safety Services Director, and she's been in a, a substitute teacher role in the primary and secondary grades. She's a graduate of Leavenworth High, University of Kansas, and uh, that's where she got her uh, education degree. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being with us, Laura. Thank you for having me. I, uh, I just want to say, because you're the first one up here today, that one of our ground rules is that four-minute rule. So I'm going to set this timer on four minutes. And I'll bet you that you yeah, terminate your comments right before that goes off. Okay. You tell the uh, people that are watching on Channel 2 uh, why it is you want to be elected to the City Commission, would you please? I've, I've been humbled by so many people who come up to me and ask me to uh, run for the City Commission. It's been a wonderful experience. I have no political experience other than working in the community as a volunteer for political campaigns. I have, a, I have a lot to bring. I am a mother, and I am a wife and a friend of so many people. I talk to so many of you, whether it's at the place of our worship or where I work, in the school, at the playground, at the park. Um, I bring honesty and integrity to the office. I have no hidden agenda. I don't have business. I have no other reason to run other than to serve the people of Leavenworth. It's very important to me to make this the best place to raise a family for not just children, those who can't vote, but for those who do vote and will vote. It's not for just the old or the young, it's for everybody. This is the best place to live. I have a hope and a vision that it can be better, that we can make some improvements. I expect accountability for all people on the commission. We represent the people. We represent their votes. I promise that people can come to me and ask me questions. Communication comes in two parts. It's not just talking. It's listening. And I believe I have that ability to listen to the people of Leavenworth. Laura, thank you. That was a brief but very telling uh, introduction of yourself. I want to follow up with a couple of questions, if you would. Sure. Um, one of the things that's on the agenda of the commission here is the uh, rehab of City Hall. Uh, have you read some of the stories about those uh, I've read plans? some of the stories and have talked to some of the people that work here. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I would like to see some improvements. Um, after going to some of the meetings, I believe we can make a difference here and make some improvements to better it for everybody. But I'd, I'm concerned about the cost. That's very important. Um, as a taxpayer, I'm concerned about any kind of expenditure. Um, but I believe that we need to make some improvements, definitely. All right, what about intergovernmental cooperation? I note that uh, uh, in uh, recent months, the uh, city of Leavenworth and the city of Lansing uh, 
uh, finally entered into an agreement to put a stoplight out at uh, Eisenhower and Shrine Park Road. Did you read about that? Yes, I did. How would you promote uh, agreements of that sort between our various governmental entities? Well, I would like to see us work more with the, uh, the different communities, the different aspects of the um, city and the county. Um, one thing I was real impressed with was the um, sheriff and police department working together for the upcoming um, uh, academy for the citizens, which would help all of us feel safer in the community that we live. So that's a, it's a start. I think we can do better at it, and I, I, I hope that we can do better at it. Laura, thank you for coming and participating today. I'm uh, sure that uh, people will remember your remarks, uh, remarks when they go to the polls. Our next uh, candidate is uh, Larry Dedeke. Uh, Mr. Dedeke uh, has previously served on the Leavenworth City Commission. Uh, he can tell us when that was. Uh, he's married to Sharon Dedeke. He's been a, uh, a longtime resident of Leavenworth. Uh, he's been in the automotive business in uh, one form or another for some years. Um, Larry, it's nice to have you with us. Thank you. It's nice being here. All right. Uh, let me set the chicken here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to turn you loose for four minutes. Yeah, I'll probably come post four minutes. All right. right. Well, tell the uh, voters out there why did you want to be elected to the city commission, would you? Okay. Uh, several reasons, really. Uh, one, uh, as I, I assume most of the other candidates who are participating in this, have been approached by uh, either one person or one group or whatever. Secondly, uh, as a prior city commission, I was elected to a four-year term. Due to a decision made by myself regarding my family, I stepped down about midway of that term. Uh, that incident, which justified that at that time, no longer exists, nor will it uh, exist again. So I would like to continue my service to the city. Uh, I felt that during the time that I was on the commission, uh, really it was in the warm-up years, uh, into my second year, I was becoming uh, more active, uh, more diligent in what, what we were doing, and uh, seen, seen a lot of things that I'd like to try to make some changes with. Uh, and, and during that same course, uh, over the years that I've been out of the commission, uh, I've viewed it courtesy of Channel 2 and the other tapes that we've had and, and occasionally coming to a meeting and following it in, a, in our local paper. Uh, several things that I'd like to uh, to make comments on. One is uh, I know that they've spent quite a bit of money on our infrastructure. Uh, Leavenworth being one of the oldest cities in, in, in Kansas or the oldest city in Kansas uh, is reaching the point where a lot of our infrastructure is starting to fail and it's, it's money justified that's being spent. Uh, so you basically say you agree with the agenda of uh, improvements? Uh, uh, of the improvements, yes, on, on, the, on the infrastructure. I think if, if we get to the point of where we caught back up, uh, the amount of money that we're spending, which you know in some years could be millions of dollars uh, to put a sewer line in, this is something that you can drive down the street and not see. Uh, you know, so a lot of people don't really see it as an improvement, but it's an improvement for us now, it's an improvement for our, our children and for our grandchildren. Uh, I feel that I, I represent a conservative viewpoint uh, or conservative view on the commission. Uh, I may look at uh, and analyze things differently than uh, some of the other people do. Uh, my thought on it, and it's no criticism intended whatsoever, is that if we have a commission that is, uh, say, corporate mindset, uh, has a uh, corporate background or a military background, whatever it is, you're not going to, or my, I guess my concern is that we could represent all aspects of the city. Uh, and it comes into the peer question of it. To, to totally, I think, represent everybody of this city, be they unemployed, underemployed, minimal wage, currently working, retired, or, or no need to work, we need to have a diversified commission. And this is somebody that, that's, that's been there and done that, you know, that has that, that uh, had some struggles. And also you need people that, uh, that have the higher education levels, that have the corporate background. What you want, I feel, is a good mingling of all these people so that you can bring out the debate and, and have different viewpoints to look at that 
certain items that's on the agendas, be it buildings or improvements or the, the budgets. Uh, and speaking of the budget, I think that it, it's easy for the for the cities or for government entities to uh, appropriate money when they when, when there's a shortcoming, uh, and that's the way the system works. But as a homeowner and, and speaking as and for the other homeowners, it's it's not as easy at the end of that month to to appropriate that additional money when you have some unforeseen expenses. So. I'm not criticizing the current commission for wasting money or, or blowing the money, is that I think we need to take a, a closer look at some of our budgetary items and uh, some of these items that may have frills on them, let's reduce them or let's put them on the shelf until you know that additional money is there. I'm going to have to interrupt you uh, there, Larry, and ask you a question to, sure. uh, to follow up. Uh, uh, we're talking about, or you've been talking about some of the uh, permanent improvements uh, in infrastructure and uh, uh, hard assets around the community. Uh, several of them come to mind, uh, swimming pool project, the, uh, their uh, proposal to do a, a walking trail along Three Mile Creek, uh, which would involve substantial uh, expenditures of money. How would you feel about that project? The uh, Three Mile Creek? Right. Okay, I, uh, to be truthful with you, I haven't followed that particular item real, real close. I have no problem on offering these nature trails. It was one of the items that was on the agenda during my term, uh, and consequently that was voted down monetarily and as a safety issue. Uh, on this particular thing, it would come down to the bottom line again. Can we afford it? All right. With that, uh, we'll terminate uh, the interview. Thank you very much, uh, Larry, for being with Thank us Thank you today. for the invitation. You bet. Our next candidate today is uh, Phil Martin. Phil Martin uh, has also been a uh, candidate for uh, office in the past. And perhaps he will address that issue with us today. Uh, Mr. Martin is married to Justina, who's a school teacher. Uh, he has uh, three daughters. How old are they, Phil? 32, 21, and 20. So they're in a position where they can give you advice now, right? If they do, too. All right. Uh, Phil's a life resident of the city, um, and he's a businessman here in the city of Lebanon. Uh, Phil, would you tell our audience why it is you want to be elected to the commission? Well, this is my, my fourth time running, so I feel as though the citizens and people I talk to are uh, uh, interested in, in me doing this. Uh, sometimes I get the feeling that they ought to just give it to me after this many times. But uh, I'm concerned about, about the city and, and where the city is going. Uh, I'm a big uh, thoughter on keeping the old part of the city. I, I love the historic value of this town. Uh, and I'd like to see that to continue rather than tear things down uh, to see if perhaps we could, we could keep them. Uh, You're talking about historic buildings uh, primarily? Or I'm not? talking about historic buildings, uh, structures uh, that's not necessarily building. We have some buildings downtown. Some of the buildings you see have the old signs still on the, the brick facet. Uh, one of my big things for a long time uh, is to maybe get those repainted so people can see what we had at one time here. Uh, the infrastructure is big to me, so I'll go on, on to that and I'll, I'll skip around on things. Uh, and it is an old town, uh, and things have been falling apart for a while. But some things really bother me. We have a Grand Avenue in town that uh, has been closed down for three years. To me, this is very unacceptable. In three years, I think uh, the commission and the staff should have found some way by now that that street should not be closed at all. Uh, the uh, Voting that we've done lately, a lot of controversy over that, including the Aquatic Center. Uh, I'm for, I know Woman Pool is, uh, needs to be replaced. I'm for an Aquatic Center to a certain uh, point, not the full blown that they had presented with us, but I'm for it where Woman Park is now. As uh, being, uh, you know, for the history and saving, saving historical structures, I hated to see when the Northeast Pool went. I would have rather seen that uh, uh, state and you know, replaced it. It concerns me, like with Woman Pool, 
that it's deteriorated. The, the pool and, and the bathhouse up there haven't deteriorated in the last six or eight years. It's been deteriorating for 15 to 20. So my concern is why haven't we been working for the last 10 to 15 years to take care of this? Sometimes I think uh, things are let go too far to where when it's finally time that we have to do something with them, then it costs us more money. Uh, I'm concerned about <clears throat> some of the money that we spend uh, and I'm going to throw it out like the welcome signs of Leavenworth. Uh, you have the word Leavenworth in the big black letters that you can't see at night. Hard to see during the daytime, but my main concern on the welcome signs is we've got the word welcome. As far as I'm concerned, it's just telling you that you're here. We have a welcome center that uh, is a nice building. Maybe spent too much to build it, but I think the welcome center uh, we should get with some of the civic groups, it should be manned. Uh, nobody wants, uh, you know, uh, not that nobody wants, but it's hard to come into a town and come to a welcome center and you go in and all you're talking to is a machine. All right. But you wouldn't be in favor of hiring somebody to manage the city hiring somebody? I, if that's what we needed, maybe so. I would prefer, I think that with the civic groups in town that we would find enough volunteers uh, for someone to go up, you know, a couple hours here, a couple hours there, and during a certain point of the day, have it made. Okay. Let me follow up on one of your first comments, and that is that you were concerned about the uh, direction the city was taking. Uh, what is it that you mean? Can you be more specific? Well, I think we're, we're, we're focusing more on, on doing things that, that need to be done, but I think we need to do them on down the line. What we need to do is take care of what we've got right now and focus some on progressing in growth and, and, and industry and econ uh, economics and stuff. But we also need to spend the time on what we've got to improve in it. Okay. Phil, thank you. That's the uh, end of our time, but I uh, appreciate your being here. And I'm sure the uh, voters and the city of Lenmark likewise thank appreciate your presence. <coughs> the uh, next candidate that will be with us today is uh, Joe Oliver. Uh, while Joe's coming uh, forward, uh, let me tell you that uh, Joe is married to Mary and has two children, Mary and Karen. And uh, Joe has uh, been active in politics, uh, uh, partisan politics, uh, and has now expressed an interest in running for an apolitical position, <coughs> or maybe we should say nonpartisan position, on the Leavenworth City Commission. Joe, welcome today. Thank you. Uh, Joe, I see you're, uh, you've got a degree from Park College, and you're retired as a programmer analyst at Fort Lauderdale. That's, That's correct. Right. Uh, how would that background help you be a good city commissioner? Well, first of all, most programmers must think logically. No pun intended on any present day commissioner, of course. And also, I've worked with people in the government. As a part of my job, I also worked on something that was known as RIS, and we had something called Inner Service Support Agreements, ISS. This is a military term, and what we did was we shared services between branches of the service, the Army with the Air Force, the Navy, the Marine Corps, etc. I feel as though that with that background, perhaps in city government, we could share resources with the state, county, city. We could join together in a united effort. I look at Carol, uh, the mayor of Kansas City, Kansas, who has moved up to a combined form of government, and she saved uh, well over a million dollars with certain things that she's done using county and city cooperation together. Now, we may not necessarily be able to go to that form of government, but we possibly could utilize that philosophy. I'm concerned because as a child, of course I'm a native of this, uh, this town, we had Abernathy, Boss, Bay State, we had Capital Electric, and also uh, go back or kind of leave them there. We need industry in here to provide jobs for people.
people must pay their mortgages. People must put food on the table. You can't do it working at McDonald's with the McDonald's. So my concern would be, first, we no longer have a transportation system. Surely there are federal grants, something available to provide transportation for the poor, disenfranchised in this community, where they can get to work, can get to school. We have programs downtown for older people who have low income to finish their GED, but how do they get there? Some of them don't have cars. We need to get people motivated. And we need to provide these services to motivate these people, to get them into work, get them paying taxes. Things of this nature, I believe if we can do that, we can, of course, make our city grow better and provide for all of the citizens. All right, let me just jump in here for a moment. Uh, that was, you're just out of time. Okay. Uh, you uh, mentioned uh, industrial development. Yes. Uh, business development in the city. Uh, of course, we've got uh, one industrial park that uh, uh, seems to me to be progressing rather nicely out on Eisenhower. What do you think the city's role ought to be in developing industrial sites for prospecting business? Well, we need to have, of course, and it has been mentioned, I think Mr. Martin mentioned, or one of the previous gentlemen, our infrastructure should be, of course, built. We need the roads to get the uh, provide these things. I recognize sometimes that you have tax abatements that you have to grant people to get them even interested to come to the community. We need to look forward to utilizing some of the old buildings. For example, uh, when Gold National moves, who do we put in? Uh, there's used to be, I guess, Martins that has the building on Cherokee Court. Cherokee is empty. Nice size building. What do we put in there? How do we fill these empty buildings? How do we get so you businesses? Would, you'd be in favor of granting tax abatements as an incentive for business? If, of course, uh, we can, uh, of course, want to be a little biased, offer these jobs for our citizens here in Leavenworth, I'm almost in favor of saying, hey, let's get a earnings tax for people who don't live here, <laughs> working, drawing the salaries. Let's have uh, Let's get tax, uh, tax, a broader tax base, and let's get up off of the, uh, the homeowners back, okay? Take an earnings tax for Fort Leavenworth employees would be an order for something that ought to be considered? Well, there's nothing in Kansas City. I had to pay it when I worked at Richard Goodbar Air Force Base. Okay. Well, that's a real interesting comment. Joe, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Mr. Dillis. You bet. Our next candidate is uh, Brian Drittman. Uh, Mr. Drittman, uh, also a candidate for the uh, City Commission, uh, is a resident of the city, of course. Uh, he's got two children, uh, one in community college and one in Leavenworth High School. Uh, welcome, Brian. Thank you for having me. Uh, Brian uh, has a, uh, a record that includes 20 years in the uh, Marine Corps and uh, as a, uh, if I can read this, uh, 14 years of human resource analyst, is that correct? Uh, I was 14 years I was in the admin chief in human resources for the Marine Corps. All right. And uh, he does have uh, college experience and he wants to be a uh, city commissioner. Brian, why don't you tell the voters uh, uh, what about your experience and your uh, education background qualifies you to be a city commissioner? Thank you. As a father of two children, my wife and I have been struggling to pay our bills and living within our means. One of the things I would like to see is our city try to do the same thing. Our city debt of $31 million works out to $750 for every man, woman, and child in the city. And I think it's time that our city starts to plan and live within a budget just like I have to with my family. I may want a new Cadillac, but I can only afford a new Chevy. So I think we need to balance things that the city really needs against things that the city would like to have or want to have. As a city commissioner, I would vote no to any tax increases, either property or sales tax. That would be my main focus. Now, I know that emergencies come up and there would be issues where, or times when, we would need to consider a tax increase. 
but my first focus would be what can we cut? Can we cut the aquatic center? Can we cut the Wagga Wagga signs? Can we cut the welcome centers? Can we cut the $100,000 street signs or welcome signs for Leavenworth? And cut out the extraneous things and just concentrate on the basic needs in order to keep the debt down so we don't have children growing up in this town inheriting a huge property tax increase to cover the debts we incur today. All five of our present commissioners signed a letter asking to extend the 1% sales tax for the Judicial Center already for 20 years. That concerns me because I never heard anything from the city coming back and saying, these are the things, the specific projects we want to spend that money on. And it was a little scary to me to see the city commission all signing together saying, let's increase the sales tax without very specific reasons why. When I budget for my family for a vacation, for groceries, for a new car, I sit down and we have to balance out what do we need the money for and what would we like to have the money for. Those are some of my big concerns. And as a city commissioner, the one thing that is real important to me because I served in the armed forces for 20 years is I think the right to vote and when a citizen votes it should be honored. And I'm very concerned that the city honor and the vote of the citizens and I would always promise to uphold whatever the citizens voted for. Because if one commissioner feels that the aquatic center is also a matter of health or safety, or they could justify for whatever reason to go ahead and, and build the aquatic center, then they could go ahead and override the vote on that as well. All right. In that, in that vein, let me ask you about the vote on Florida. Uh, the referendum uh, was to fluoridate the water here in the city of London. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, yet there's been a move to request that the city somehow override that vote ask for another vote on the same issue. How do you feel about that? Well, I stated last night that the concerned taxpayers of Leavenworth County were nice enough to have a meeting for us. I can't go both ways. If I believe in supporting the voters and their two-thirds majority voted against the Aquatic Center, I have to stand the same way on the fluoride issue. Now, through legal means, if, if private citizens can find other means to bring it up to the citizens to revote the issue, I would support them in that endeavor. But if it came to a vote of the city commission or the house commissioner, my vote would be no in support of the voters. All right. Um, you did mention, uh, and I think what I'm doing is intruding on your time just a little bit, but I'll ask you another question here. Um, you indicated you wouldn't vote for any tax increases unless it involves some uh, urgent or basic needs that have to be provided. Is that your statement? Yes, sir. Uh, give us an example of what you would vote for or what you wouldn't vote for in terms of uh, a tax increase. Certainly. I think our city needs to prioritize what our needs are against wants. I may want an aquatic center, but I don't need to increase taxes for it. I need fire protection. I need police protection. And if my police officers are not being paid a fair salary, a competitive salary to keep them in our city and, and to grow with us, then if I have no other funding available, that would be a need and I would be in favor for increasing taxes for that. All right. Brian, thank you very much for explaining your positions to us. Uh, the uh, next candidate uh, is uh, sitting commissioner, H.B. Weeks, Jr. Uh, H.B., uh, former mayor of the city of Lebanon, uh, serving on the commission and uh, requesting that the uh, voters put him back in office for another term. Welcome, H.B. John, it's good to be here. Thank you. All right. Let me set the timer on you. I know that never happens at commission meetings. But I bet you can handle it in four minutes. Tell us why you ought to be returned to another term. Well, my first uh, first endeavor in politics was to run for the county race. I uh, ran unsuccessfully on two occasions. <coughs> City commissioner was my second choice. I guess maybe the good Lord's trying to tell me something. Maybe that's my vocation. I'm finishing up my current term. I've had an enjoyable time. I think I've learned quite a bit. I've asked the voters of Leavenworth to give me another four years to continue some of the projects that we've already started. A few things about me, you know, everybody talks about being on a fixed income. I have a double retirement. I think that qualifies as a fixed income. I've chosen to go back to work because I got bored sitting around. I think it would be a terrible world if everyone always had their hand out and wanted something. And I think that I've been given the opportunity to serve the city of Leavenworth, and I'd like to do that. I've been through the, the 
the rigors to uh, go through the learning curve. You know, everybody talks about spending money. No one wants to spend any money unless it's their particular pet rock. Uh, the real trick is to, uh, to get a hold of the big picture and balance things out. You can't focus on any one facet of the city and pull that facet further ahead than the rest because if you do, then you get behind. And when you start paying catch up, then you get even further behind. And I hear people talk about, well, we don't want to increase the taxes. But when you look at 69% of the budget goes toward personnel services and benefits. And if you give those employees an equitable raise each and every year, there has to be a way to fund that. And a 3% raise on 69% of your budget is a significant amount. And if it's not taken up through property tax, it has to be, a, or if it's not taken up through sales tax, it has to be accommodated through property tax. I think that as, as a, a city who is exempt of a tremendous amount of real estate, 40, depending on who you talk to, 47, 48% of our real estate is tax exempt, federal property. Our reliance on sales tax is going to have to increase if we don't. Otherwise, we're going to have to raise property taxes. We, we work on economic viability in the city of Leavenworth. All of the things that we do, we try and focus and get the most bang for the buck. I've said many times, let's do it, let's do it right and be done with it. I think we've done a good job of that. I'd like to continue doing that job. In terms of uh, long-range goals and improvements to the city, uh, what do you see on the horizon? We have to finish the economic redevelopment of the downtown area, get that piece put together, figure out a way to fund it, and, and create a desirable downtown environment. We completed one project, the uh, Cody Plaza project, which brought people back into the downtown area in terms of residences. That creates more foot traffic and activity in the downtown, which should have a synergistic effect and create more business opportunities. There are some other things that are ongoing in terms of uh, economic development for residences. It's a slow, methodical process, and you have to keep pulling on the same of the rope all the time. What should the role of the city be with respect to encouraging new business to come into the city? I think the city should be a facilitator. You know, you talk about tax abatement. You don't like to give away tax dollars, but when the when the when the option is to not have a business or to concede some of those tax dollars temporarily, then it makes economic sense to do that. You'd like to see it not happen. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Dillon store went in without any tax incentives. You love to see those things happen, but it's not always at a level playing field. In order to be competitive, you have to you have to give something. HB, thank you. Our time's up. Appreciate you being with us and explaining your views to the voters. Thank you, John. The uh, next candidate would be uh, Byron Maduska. Uh, did I pronounce that correctly, Byron? That's about as close as anybody gets. Good. Uh, Byron also, of course, is a resident of the city. Uh, he's never held elected office before, but he uh, desires to be elected to the Lemberg City Commission. Uh, he's been, uh, he's had a career in the United States Air Force and uh, is in uh, quality management. Uh, I believe, uh, according to his uh, brief resume here, he's worked for Xerox uh, and uh, he's had a uh, career in, uh, in his educational career. He's uh, got a degree in ba business administration and a master's of public administration. Um, Byron, why don't you tell us uh, what your educational experience and background will do for the city? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that I've been encouraged by a lot of people uh, to run for the city commission uh, who think that we need a lot higher level of qualifications of experience and education on the commission and it would help. Uh, I think that the Bachelor of Science in Business uh, gives me a background to, uh, to understand the problems and concerns of the business owners here. And I've talked to a lot of I know a good many of them since I was born in this town. And many of them think that they, they are treated like cash cows at tax time and pariahs at other times. And they, they feel that the less involvement they have in the city, the better off they are. And that shouldn't be that way. It needs to be changed. 
if a business in this uh, town wants to improve or enhance its capabilities, it should be allowed to. It should be supported probably. It should not be made to be a troublemakers because they want to improve their, their business. Uh, I believe it's a master of public administration degree, which is basically a governmental management degree. It gives me a background in a lot of areas of government that none of, these, none of the other candidates really could match. Uh, it's an in-depth program in the study of administrative law, public personnel, administration, public finance, large-scale budgeting, intergovernmental relations, and grants, uh, and a wide area of other governmental uh, functions and processes that most people aren't aware of or, or have very little knowledge of. Uh, I think that background on the commission would be ex extremely helpful to them. It also would give me uh, the background I would need to look at the projects and programs and policies brought to the commission by various department heads and others in a little more analytical light than most of the members of the commission could. Uh, the EPA also gave me that background in the, uh, the study of policy making, implementation, and statistical evaluation of public projects and programs. And I know how to do the research on those. I know how to ask the questions that need to be asked. Uh, I don't think I can very easily be snowed on these things. And I'm, more, I'm familiar with the utility problems and, and the other sorts of things that many people, uh, other people don't know about. Um, I also, as you mentioned, I was uh, a United States Air Force officer and I commanded units uh, as large as 700 people assigned. Also, very large directors that had full base wide authority and decision making uh, capacity and had to develop very large budgets uh, to managers and monitor the programs uh, under those. Uh, I am uh, very experienced in making very tough priority decisions in the budget making arena, which is a big part of what the city commission has to do. Uh, in any budget, a very large portion of it is. Uh, non-discretionary. You have no choice. It's one of the other candidates mentioned. But those discretionary spending areas, I think, are, are the real meat of the budget. That's where your decision-making authority has to come into play. And that's where the tough priority decisions are. My priorities in office, basically, very shortly, would be infrastructure, which I think is in, in dire need of attention. Our roads and bridges are in bad shape. Uh, public safety items, I agree with one of these folks that uh, one of the only things that would really uh, convince me to raise taxes very much at all if I did would be uh, salaries and other uh, resources for police and fire. And my other priority I think is trying to control property taxes because I think this next city commission is going to have a big challenge in that area. Maybe the only governmental agency in this town or county that's really going to do it. Let me give you a follow-up question on the infrastructure. Uh, what do you see uh, as being a need, a, a priority need, in the area of improving the infrastructure of the city in the next few years? I tell you one thing, if you are away from this town for a good while and you come back to it, uh, one of the first things you notice is that the streets, alleyways, uh, are in terrible condition. They really are compared to other towns. I, I believe all over this country and several others. And I have very rarely been to a place with poor street conditions than we have here. There are also some bridges out here that I think right now, if they do not get some attention shortly, they're going to have to be replaced. If you uh, be specific about one, uh, most people probably wouldn't want to do it, but if you go out to the bridge over Three Mile Creek out about 12th and Osage, and go under that bridge and take a look at it, you know it's a dire need of repair, and it has been for a while. It's had a large crack down through the pavement for a long time, leaking water, salt, and other minerals down through there. It's bad. The substructure under the floor is very corroded. Uh, I don't know if the city uh, public works people have even taken note of it. It's been this way for a good while. You think the uh, city is uh, ignoring that particular structure? Well, I, I'm not aware of any plans to do anything about it. Uh, I have looked at it, and I think something has been about it before too long. That bridge is going to be in a very serious condition, and it's not the only one. There are several others. And I hear this from people around town a lot, too, that the infrastructure, the streets, alleyways, and other things are just not maintained very well here. 
Byron, thank you very much for being with us and sharing your views with us. Thank you. I know the voters will appreciate this. I'm going to take a break for a few minutes and then we'll be back and our uh, next guest will be uh, Henry W. Bill Johnson, Jr.